Hi, how you doing? Welcome back to another Drift Cars JP video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a coolant flush on your 2016 Mitsubishi Triton uh, 2.4 diesel. So, if you've watched my other video with the service, this is just a continue on, on from that. Um, it's still the same day and everything like that. So, what we're going to start off with is what you need to do first off, just under your radiator cap, make sure you just release the pressure if it's hot before you take the cap right off. Take your cap off, place it over there. Now what you need to do, you've got to get yourself a decent sized drain tray. And we're going to jump, jump underneath. And I'll show you where there's a, a drain cock for your radiator. So just underneath here, you see just there, there's a plastic drain cock there. So what you got to do, undo it by hand. It shouldn't be overly tight. Just undo it until it starts uh, leaking cooling out. Pull the, the drain cup back and we'll just sit in there and let, let that all drain out. So we'll just leave that sit, that'll probably take about five minutes for everything to drain out. And so once it's pretty much slowed down, make sure your tray's a fair way back under the car. And now what you want to do is come to the back of your motor here and see this heater hose here. We need to take this heater hose off. You need to take your clamp off. So make sure you've got a good pair of um 45 degree and 90 degree pliers, it's just it's in a bit of a hard spot to get to. So you need to take this hose off, get as far away out of as possible. You should be able to pull it off, that one's come off relatively easy. See the, what we want to do is we want to flush the coolant all the way through this part of the system because you can't just flush it through the radiator because the thermostat's going to stop the uh, circulation of the coolant so what we're going to do we're going to stick the hose inside here and then we're going to flush the flush the uh, water through the whole system okay so what you want to do is just place the nozzle of your hose inside the the heater hose there then just turn your hose on Okay, and we'll leave that and you'll see it'll start to come out through the, through the bottom hose there. I don't know if, it, if it's hard to see, but it's coming out nice and blue. So what we want to do is we want to flush that through until the water comes out clear. So you want to make sure you try and catch as much of it in your tray as possible. It's going to come out blue for quite a while, so I won't film the whole thing. So it, it might take five minutes of just sitting there with the, the coolant um, getting pushed out. Once it's all nice and clear, you're all ready to go. So we'll pick up the camera, uh, pick up the video back then when it's uh, clear. Okay, so I've run that through for about two, three minutes. Now the water's coming out clear uh, at the bottom of the heater hose. So what we can do is turn our hose off now and put our heater hose back on. Okay, so now we can um, stick our heater hose back on. Now with, with a car of this age, you're not gonna find any real rust deposits or anything really bad coming out of the coolant it's literally just to replace the coolant because the actual cooling efficiency of the coolant dies off over over time so make sure your clamps back on properly now when you when you do do this and you, you drain all the uh coolant out by flushing it with water you're going to have water left in the engine you can never get all the water out of the uh, actual cooling system of the car because unless you take like the drain plug out of the side of the motor which no dealer or service place ever does so what you need to use is the concentrate because the water that's left sitting in the actual engine will just mix mix with the concentrate and like I said this this makes 10 litres this system probably takes about 8 to 10 litres or 12 litres in it anyway so what we'll do is we'll start filling it up. Now we can put our drain plug back in I can see all the water water's just coming out nice and clear so that just goes in finger tight you don't have to go really over tight on it just do it up to the point where it's uh, nice and snug. Her. and that's it so once it's done up now we can go up the top and start filling her up now you can either fill this up just by just tipping that in but what I have got is a, is a coolant uh, header, header bottle so that just wedges into your uh, coolant system like that these are about uh, $25 I think for the whole kit so what you can do is you 
you pull this plunger out of the middle here and that allows the, the uh, coolant to, to drain in and this is the best way for bleeding it to get as much air out of the system as possible so and then we'll just fill it up okay so once we've got it filled up that'll just start start trickling down like that so what you want to do is go and start the car up start the car up now what you want to do is put your your fan on on face as fast to, as high speed and higher temperature as possible because this, this is what's going to help you bleed the coolant through the whole system so put that on set it at 32 and then just let it idle and you can probably leave the thing idle for about good three or four or five minutes before it starts to actual do any sort of bleeding So you will see just little bubbles popping out. Now we'll let this idle for probably about probably a good five or six minutes before it gets some temperature in it. So we'll pick it up then. Okay, so after about five minutes of let it idle, you'll still have no, no heat in it. So what we'll need to do is just sit here, bring the revs up about two and a half thousand and just we'll sit it there for a little while till we start to get some heat coming through. You can sort of look through the, the window and you should be able to see the, uh, the coolant start to fluctuate and go up and down. That's when you start to get a bit more movement through the system. So we'll idle it like this for probably about three or four minutes. You see the coolant temperature has already come up one, one bar. So what we want to do is try and get it around the middle. So then we know the thermostat's open so we get a full uh, bleed of the coolant. Now that's why we've got the vents open with the on full heat so you're getting full circulation through the entire system of the coolant. So I uh, said so we'll need to sit here and do this for a little while. Probably about a good another two or three minutes. Okay, so we've had that running for about uh, 2000 RPM for about probably five or six minutes. Sometimes bring it up a little bit higher, like bring it up to 3000 RPM, let it drop back down a bit. Make sure you've got a lot of heat coming through the vents, like what your normal heat operation is. And then there you know you've, you've got the uh, coolant flowing all the way through the system. So we'll go back out to the engine. So now what you want to do is just grab your heater hoses. Make sure your heater hoses are hot. And you've got, you've got uh, coolant flowing through them. Grab your top radiator hose. That should be pretty cool because it hasn't, been, uh, hasn't done a lot of work. We'll sit that there for a while. We're still getting a few little bubbles come out of the system. You can squeeze the radiator hose every now and then. Just give it a bit of a squeeze, the top radiator hose, like I'm doing there, just to help push push any more air out of the system. See that a bunch of times. These things aren't diesels aren't awfully hard to bleed anyway. Once you once you pretty much got. Um, once you've pretty much got coolant going, uh, heat coming through the uh, the vents, you know you've pretty much bled the whole all the system all the way through. All we're going to do now is just wait till the thermostat opens, just to let it suck the rest of the, the coolant through, and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, now I've had that idling for probably about a good five minutes. Um, I've given a few revs up in between. Um, now we've got the temperature up to halfway, which is spot on. So super hot heater coming out of the vents. And that's pretty much the coolant uh, chain finished. So it hasn't dropped too much more down in the level. So we'll shut this off. And then we can pull this out. And just have your radiator cap ready. Okay, so that's the coolant flush done just obviously check your your coolant level make sure it's on the upper mark what is always good to do i always find after you've done your coolant flush and you've driven it for a couple of days just double check your overflow to make sure it's on the the high mark quite often even when we do them at a dealership we'll do it and it'll actually still drop a little bit over over the next few times it, it cools up and heat, uh, heats up and cools down so you always just want to just top that up a couple of days later 
Now that's it for our coolant flush. Um, like I said, if you've got any questions with the coolant flush, give me uh, a, a message on uh, YouTube there and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Um, that's the same way we, we pretty much do it at a dealership. We just, just flush it out and put some new coolant in. And yeah, so I hope that helps you uh, do the coolant flush yourself at home and hopefully it gives you the confidence to do it yourself. Um, I try to make the video, it might be a bit of a long video, but I try to sort of show every part of the video. Obviously I skip the parts where we're sitting there and it's idling and, and revving it for five five minutes or so, but that part's a bit boring. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, yeah, give me a, th a thumbs up on the video if this helps you. Anyway, thank you very much. We'll see you on the uh, next video. Cheers, bye.